Hey there everybody, Damien Erskine here, um, greeting you from beautiful hotel in Kingston, Ontario. Um, pardon me, I did the best I could with lighting and setup. Hopefully this works, but I'm going to be on the road for the next five weeks and I wanted to still be able to get you guys some videos and, uh, and some articles along the way. Um, recently somebody wrote in with a question about my pinky, of all things. Apparently they noticed me and others um, actually using, seeming to use my pinky and they just asked, in essence, I can't remember exactly how they phrased it, um, <clears throat> but it was in essence, um, he'd never considered the pinky to be a useful finger <laughs> when playing bass and um, how did I utilize my pinky? And I thought about it and I, I identified essentially three ways in which I might use my pinky. Um, one is a method of dampening a note, adding, um, adding a bit of natural decay, speeding up the natural decay process of a note without just uh, clinching it off and muting it. Um, another is as a muting finger, um, and a third as an, as an anchor point. So I thought I'd demonstrate these three things to you um, here. Um, so first, as a means of um, shutting off a note a little early, I, I, I consider it a kind of an artificial natural decay in essence. Um, so what I mean by this, and you're gonna lose my face here for a second, but I wanna make sure you guys can see it. When I'm holding a note and I want it to end sooner than it would naturally, but I don't wanna just stop it, um, I will often take my pinky and touch the bridge saddle and then slowly move my finger up the string. So essentially I'm just touching it behind the saddle so I'm not affecting the sound at all. And then very slowly and in a controlled manner moving it this way until it dampens naturally. Usually it doesn't take much. Usually I can just pull it over just a little bit and then the string very quickly stops vibrating but it gives it kind of a natural um, natural tail instead of just clamping it off and cutting it off or you know too too fast often if I'm playing a, say I'm playing like a ballad or something and then maybe I don't have anything coming up in that next section um, maybe the chord's about to change, but I'm not going to play a note. So I just want to, I just want to hurry up and get that note to close off before the next section, or something like that. I might use my finger, pinky, from the bridge saddle, slide it over, just a hair, micro movements, natural decay, boom. Second method, <coughs> um, as a muting finger. Um, this kind of came about naturally. I haven't really seen anybody else do this, although I, I doubt I'm the only one. Um, I just haven't noticed it. Um, but, as you all know, I like to palm mute a lot. Um, and I have a number of different ways I get a muted sound depending on the tone I'm going for. Every method of muting uh, produces a slightly different kind of sound. And also a different feel. Um, sometimes whatever I'm playing might fit the hand position of a certain muting style versus another. Um, so pinky as muting finger. There's a couple of ways we can do this and hopefully I can get you all to see this. Just like when we were dampening the note, we can actually just kind of touch the string just to the inside of the bridge saddle. But you may notice we're only able to dampen one string at a time. So at some point, I began to kind of curl my finger around. So my finger was curled essentially under. I mean, I can actually like lift my base with my pinky on the string. And then, this is really hard to display, bending my pinky over so my other knuckle touches the next string up. So in essence, I can mute two strings and it puts my hand in this nice and comfortable kind of almost classical guitar position but you all know I use my thumb a lot. It gets, puts my hand in the perfect position to play 
with my three finger technique on those two strings. And again, I'm just kind of pinky a little bit under one string and leaning against the next string. Um, this also gives me a nice strong anchor. I can actually use it to like give me a little bit of leverage to hammer my hand back against the strings if I want. And this very closely relates to my third boop way. Sorry, guerrilla style warfare with the uh, camera angles and the lighting and the recording of all of this. I hope this works for you all. Um, I mentioned using pinky as anchor. When I started using my three finger technique, the first thing I discovered was that I lost my anchor point. Because um, unless I was holding on a string and playing with these two fingers still, there was nothing, my hand was floating. Which is not a bad thing. It actually feels kind of nice. But sometimes you want a nice strong anchor. And I like a strong anchor while I'm using my thumb sometimes. So again, very similarly, I started using my pinky on the bridge, on the other side of the saddle, so I'm not affecting the tone of the strings. But I can hold my pinky on any saddle I want, be it low or high in register. So the whole time I'm just holding my pinky to the saddle, giving me free and unencumbered rain to play with three fingers if I so desire. And from there it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to turn it into a muting thing or mute a note. So three fairly closely related um, but slightly different functions for the pinky. Um, short little lesson but uh, not even really a lesson. It's just this one, see, you know, I was about to type this up as a, a regular Ask No Damien column via the written word, and uh, it seemed like this would be a hell of a lot easier to show than to explain um, in text. So, for any of you who are ever wondering about that, ever curious, I hope that helps. Um, and if you weren't, maybe I even uh, triggered you, uh, inspired you to go explore ways in which you might use any of your fingers in any number of ways. Pinky can be pretty handy in the right circumstance. So, hope some of you found that useful. Have a great day. Take care. I'll see you next week.